Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting 189 coming up on the end of May. I don't know, it's starting to look a little bit like summer here. <sighs> Hope it's looking appropriate weather for wherever you live. Uh, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of us that aren't here with us right here, right now. Let's go jump into the agenda. Triage, because we always do triage. Uh, then Sean asked to review the burn for modular searches, which, as uh, I was just refreshed, is actually an old topic, um, but probably finally coming around to being implemented as we're starting to get to the uh, shorter list of things. And then we'll discuss, we'll have a discussion about discussions. Um, GitHub is releasing a discussions feature. Uh, we'll talk about um, that and what it could or won't mean for us. And then, as always, we'll take questions and comments. So let us get this underway. Bob, you ready for trash? Uh oh, did we lose Bob? He was here just a minute ago. I'm unmuted and ready for triage. Yay, we are ready for triage. Um, we have a couple things from Sean that I thought were just like going. Like in fact, this has lots of merges and stuff to it. Is this even done? No. Uh, Oh, automatic move to Wix Cup. Uh, what's left here, Sean? Is this just open and needs to be assigned burn and carry on? Pull. Actually paying attention to the new properties. All right, so we could put this in burn and continue to run this down, right? Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't get a label before. Yep. All right, cool. That's, that happens. Um an issue with attached detached this is a bug right is that what we that what you discovered here at the end that's yeah, how things bug. are getting mismatched so oh he's this is not related is it a pr for that 11 hours ago i don't know i don't either um Yes, so we would take this in four, obviously. Uh, would we take the six in three? I don't know. Depends on how scary it is, probably, right? This is just comes down to probably people not using detached containers much. Very yeah, likely. That we've had this bug laying around forever. If it really is a problem like this. Where people always have internal caps. MSI with internal caps. Ah, right, that's possible too. Um, detached containers don't really buy a lot, so it wouldn't surprise me if... They, they can if you can organize your downloads. If, the, if you can organize your downloads such that conditions never require packages out of those detached containers... Right. So right, but it, it, it's never going to be more granular than having individual downloads, right? Uh, correct. Except you get the compression. But yeah. Um. Sure. Yeah. At the moment, it's cap compression. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you can optimize it in a big way if you try really hard. My my dream is that we at some point get LZMA compression for containers, and then you can do an uncompressed cab, an uncompressed external cab, mm -hmm. and you'll get you'll get some you can get some really impressive uh, compression ratios with that. Mm -hmm. um, .NET Framework redistributable does that. Yes, that's right. Um, all right, so are we taking this if this fix is good? It doesn't look like he's interested in doing the work of putting it in four because he hasn't done anything with it in four. And this isn't it. Probably revealed only after adding support for large bootstrappers. I see. So this is probably a fix for a previous issue. I think he referred to the wrong issue here. This is uh, four, 519 yeah. is the pull request. Oh, 519 is a pull request? 
Yeah. Uh, um, five nineteen. Oh, okay. Well, this has been going for a little bit then. I see. Um, all right, let's put it in four and let's see if a change comes for four for it. And then we will, yeah, let's put it four. We should look at fixing the attached containers and four if he's not going to bring the changes over. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, add new element for custom BA, BE data. I think we discussed this on the Wix Devs mailing list. I don't know if there's anything else more to talk about for it, right? Um, yeah, I think we've covered it. Yeah, so this is pretty straightforward coming up with names for the Bootstrap extension data. So, yeah. Um, he actually changes file permissions. This is a support request, really. Why does the file become locked? Yeah, this is a support request. Uh, although Blair said something here is, this is this is Adobe's design to remove to to set their file to during self-reg to uh, set their file to be what admin only, probably a security hack, right? <laughs> Where they're trying to prevent the com registration pointing to a file that could be modified by a non-admin or something like that. Um, ancient history. Um, I don't know. I didn't know Heat would execute code from his OCX. Well, it's a self reg code. That's how self reg works. Anyway, uh, this is a support ticket, and I think it can go away. <laughs> you can go talk about it on the Wix users if you want. Yep. Um, allow harvest files the same name but different extension. This, I think, is confused. We were discussing this offline a bit. And I think this issue, the fix, is very confused because all the changes are in um, yeah, multiple source files. Ob okay, now this, uh, I can't, it looks like this. Multiple source files, object file, there's this object result in the output file. This is like the source only if extension or path. So I don't know why, I think this is confusing. That first part is confusing. Well, the the harvest task is auto-generating the file name for the WXS file. Sure. And then if it's not putting enough information in there to get different source files for different files that you want to harvest. But that's the part I don't understand. Oh, my program, but this is. So like he's trying to do my program.exe and my program.json. Harvest file commands for those in MS build. I guess. I mean, you can question why he's using harvest file for these things, but if you're going well, to do that. that's where we ended up. <laughs> because, again, it comes down to trying to harvest multiple files. Harvest file just you know, ends up calling heat file. It, you know, it wraps heat file with all the, the item and property group settings to, to plug it into the build. But at the end of the day, it's still designed to harvest a single file, right? I, right. So, yes, I guess... All right, I get better now. Like he's trying to use uh, the, harvest the file for is both if, of these. It, yeah. But if you have two harvest file elements targeting the same base name with different extensions, that should work. And that doesn't work. And so that's what this change is trying to do. Okay. Interesting way to go about trying to get the solution solved. All right. Well, this changes in four, right? 
Yep. Yeah, because it's in the harvesting stuff. So I guess, all right. Uh, okay, we could take this at four because I agree that harvest file. Yeah, pro nobody's probably ever done this before where you use harvest file to harvest the PDB because in general, the purpose of harvest file is to do self-rich capture. At least that was the intention of it. And so yeah. using it to try to pull in individual files is, was not the intention of it, but it probably shouldn't create really strange behavior like this either. So, and the fix is to add the, basically the fully qualified path to these things, at least the project relative path to it, which will create really long harvesting names, which could overflow paths, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, it's heat. All right. Uh, I guess, yeah. All right. We could, I can see how you get there. Oh, here's the change. Um, how you get there with all of these bits and pieces added to it. This is going to get really big. Could get really big. Because that component group name and that directory ref name could be long. Also, directory ref is optional, which is okay. Because this would then be blank, presumably. Component group name is not. So, actually, no, this is directory from the harvest file. Yeah, frickin' A. This stuff is such a mess. Yeah, and at a certain point, you know, there's more XML involved in using harvest file than in, you know, just authoring the files directly in WAX. If, you, if you're not doing, you know, software edge capture, this is just going to create a component in a file. Yep. And a component group. And a component group, sure. Harvest file, file, and component group. I don't know what we do when it gets too long. Well, how, sorry, wouldn't response files take care of that? Yeah, probably. I mean, wouldn't oh, actually, response no, files automatically? Yeah, actually, that's a good point, because we're going to use a response file to pull that in, or no, we're just going to be straight command line parameters in. So you're right, the path won't matter on this, as long as it can be written to disk. As long as your intermediate output oh. path plus all of this doesn't blow up. Next path, yeah. Yes. So, but, sure. <laughs> I, fine, I don't care. I mean, the, the harvesting, that harvesting stuff is such a mess, so. Yeah, it's fine. We'll, we'll take it. Put it in four. I mean, it's in four, so that's great. Uh, oh, that's heat. That's that. ARM32 to burn. I didn't think we were doing ARM32. I thought ARM32 was dead, like, was Windows RT or whatever the name was. We didn't need to do it, then. That's fine. All right. I've been... I've been maintaining ARM support in the custom actions as I, you know, add ARM64. Um, I, I, you know, I'd love to kill it because I don't think it's in use today. All right, cool. Then this is gone. We're not doing ARM32. <laughs> it's it's gone, right? ARM well, again, we. I mean, the last time we talked about this, it was we we shouldn't kill something unnecessarily. So, you know, we do support ARM32 today. And, Some, yeah, oh. not in, well, remember we also used to explicitly support ARM32 in Burn. Yeah. It was the only thing other than x86 that we did support. Yes. Because um, I worked on the Visual been, Studio team and the remote desktop team yep. needed it. The, the, uh, the remote debugger the debugger. The debugger yep. team, not the remote debugger team, the debugger team needed it. Yes. Or, or remote debugging, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I think it was the only um, ARM thirty two XE that wasn't built by Windows, but no, sorry, um, <laughs> um, special. Um, I, you know, I, personally, I'd be fine if we, you know, I, I'd like us to be able to support ARM, but until someone comes, you know, a, a customer comes up and says, "Hey, we need this," and then it'd be a simple, you know, relatively simple matter of 
turning it back on. I don't know that it makes a whole lot of sense to, you know, start cluttering up all of our NuGet packages with ARM32 support. But again, like I said, we're already doing this. Right. Visual Studio itself does not support ARM anymore for like the remote debugger. They stopped that in, I think, I want to say Visual Studio 2015. Um, but it, the C++ compiler does support it. Windows SDK does support it. Okay. So, so, what are we doing? Nobody's building WinRT code anymore, right? As far as I know, this is not usable. It's not useful to anyone. Okay, then let's not do it. And let's, I, yeah, we need the ARM64 burn. And I think we already sure. Yeah. So that's great. That put it in four, and we're tracking the work, and let's go get that done. And I think the ARM32 burn, we're just not doing that. Nobody needs it. The Visual Studio guys have already shipped, and they're not shipping it anymore. Right. So, all right. Uh, we keep talking about this ARM stuff, and I'm like, no, I'm done with that. We're not doing that anymore. So, um, all right. All right. Um, Sean went back and triaged a couple things, so let's go talk about those. Wix bootstrapper should provide Windows build number as a variable. No, oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Is this already in? I thought I thought I saw this go around or something. I took I took it in four. There's a pull request in three. Ah, so the but question is: when we, we triaged when we triaged it, we never put it in a milestone. Right. Someone someone screwed up. Whoever was scribing that day, don't know who it was. Um. Do we want to change our answer? Do we, do we, are we going to take this in 314? Does it help you move to four? No. All right, let's do it in four and we'll call it good and we'll see if anything screams. Component installation path throws overflow exception. What's this? Is this in DTF? Must be in DTF. Yeah, it's in DTF. Because MSI locate is declares a uint cast to assigned of install state, which is actually that number. Is not been able to reproduce it current v4. Does not use props any longer, which is not set check for underflow overflow. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, probably should still be set correctly. Um, would we take it in V3? I don't know. When was this open? Hmm, fairly recently. I'm kind of, uh, a year ago. <laughs> Almost a year ago. Um, clearly in four. Are we taking this change in three? No. Sixth in four, and if they want to come back and screen for it, I think we could we could re we, we could rediscuss it if they really want to push it in the th in the three. Let's see if they come back if, or if they've already worked around the issue. All right, so that stays where it is. No change is needed, and that goes to four. And if someone really screams, then we can talk about um, what that means. Um, hooks burn Wix execution execute searches at runtime. Sean. Uh, I know it's a triage, but let's go straight into your um, thing you wanted to discuss here. Uh oh. Maybe I shouldn't have asked him. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's basically I create a new concept in Burn of like a I called it a bundle extension, but maybe it should be a burn extension. Um, so the way it works right now is during 
detection, there can now be searches that are implemented inside of a bundle extension. So during when the burn manifest is created, then it'll add a line in the burn manifest saying, I have an extension search. The extension has this ID and then we're doing the search with this ID. And then during detection, it'll go through it. Burn will see that there's an extension search. So it'll go and load the extension if it's not already loaded. And then it calls into the extension saying, uh, I need you to run this search with this ID. And then if the extension needs any data for to be able to run that, then there's this new bundle extension data.xml, a new manifest that the extension can put data into. And then, so basically the extension gets the ID for the search, and then it can go hit the bundle extension data manifest if it needs more information about that search. And then it has most of the same variable callbacks to the engine that a BA does. So if it wants to set a variable, then it'll set a variable as part of its search. Does it make sense? Yep. Yep. Did we at one point have the burn extensions just everywhere, not just for searches, where there is always the ability for an extension to like happen, I guess it's like before and after detect and all those kinds of entry points, just like a BA does? Uh, I think we could do that. I mean, I, I made it message-based just like the BA. Yeah. So right now there's just one message saying uh, perform search. I wonder if we'd get more mileage out of it if it wasn't so narrow and it was just, hey, do your thing. And naturally an extension that wanted to do searches would do so um, around the begin detect operation, right? As, as early as it could, presumably. Not a lot of point in doing searches before execute. Um, well, one of the reasons I did it the way I did is so you can order them. So order them. So you could use one search to get another one. Yeah, you can. You can have your custom search rely on a built-in search, or the other way around. And the built-in searches allow that as well, among each other. Yes, that makes sense. I see. So you need a little bit extra so the searches can resolve each other at runtime. Okay. So I, that that sounds fine to me. I think one. I agree with you. I like the idea of it being a um, a burn extension instead of a bundle. Ex no, now I'm questioning that because what do we we the BA we call a bootstrapper extension application. <laughs> oh, let me try that again. The BA we call a bootstrap application because um, we avoided using the codename burn for externally. So we could call them bootstrapper extensions to make them peers of the bootstrap application. I don't know. Um, I'm not against bundle extension either. <laughs> um, and on top of that, I think this is a great place to start with the searches because I agree that you guys are right that the whole ordering thing is interesting. And I do think that there's something here where it could be, um, they could be extended to do throughout the, throughout the process. They could be um, asked to, you know, work alongside the, the BA. And as you said, because they're message passing, it's essentially right, you know, if you don't recognize this message, ignore it. So you can write an extension today that only knows about searches and ignore all the future things that may show up, right? All the future messages that may show up. Right. Right. 
All right, cool. Sounds fantastic. Sounds like a great place to start with a very real scenario that doesn't box us in or doesn't prevent us from um, adding the more um, general purpose or more why, essentially more messages throughout the whole process as it would go along. Cool. Now, the, the way I'm thinking of it, the, I'm calling a bundle extension because it's more extension of the core engine than it is um, helping or enhancing the bootstrap replication. Because you could so always do more, the searches in the BA itself if you wanted to. Right. So but, it's, it's more a way of an extension author to be able to extend the burn engine than it is to try to help a bootstrap application show UI or do their business sorry. logic. I totally agree. It's it's the extension should not be there to help the BA show UI or do those things. It should be a way of adding more functionality to burn that presumably BAs would take dependencies on. They would know that it's there. Otherwise, why bring in that extension? Right. Yeah. Right. So that so I I 100% agree with you that that is generally how they would be used. I'm just the our names in here, you know, with bundle and bootstrapper and burn, we're not we're not solid on them, I guess, um, because we we have differentiated the uh, bootstrapper and the bundle from each other, and the burn engine is like three different names for at most two different concepts, right? And we have them all in the system right now. Although I don't think burn is in any user-facing stuff, is it? Today? Some of those elements that I'm adding mm -hmm. in that other issue for the bundle extension data. Yeah. Uh, we called the top level element bundle custom data, but then the inner elements are burn attribute, burn attribute definition, burn element. What do we want to name? Yeah, we should have one base name for all of these. Do you think so? So that would say bundle to me, right? Because bundle's the thing that we push up the most, and Bootstrapper we've has been at best the engine. But yeah, and and Bootstrapper has. You know, some L lots of benefits. connotations. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so the problem is that a BA is, if I remember correctly, and the interface is called a bootstrap replication, is it not? Yeah. Right. So we're we're living with that one there. It's four zero. We could break it if we wanted. To, want to? Yeah. It's still a BA. It is still a BA. My um, initials. Yes, we yes, I'm well aware that you're very proud of it. Um, no, I still prefer UX, but that's just me. <sighs> that didn't mean anything to anybody, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. Um, all right, I'm not going to solve this right now. I can't, my brain is not working on the names, but I think we all agree on the functionality, even if we have not nailed down the name for this and whether we expose burn, whether, and, and if the engine is exposed separate from the bundle and if bootstrapper should be used at all. I think it's, we just kind of have to like nail down what do we want that terminology to be. And then how yep. much do we want to clean up the past um, in the future? So Agreed. All right. I, I don't want to have that conversation right now. I'm not mentally prepared for that one. <laughs> but we should uh, – Sean, can I, I, I want to leave that with you of the – all right, I need – because you're going to say, I need the names for these things because you're going to write them or have written them, and we need to name them properly. So let's go take that to Wix devs probably or the next meeting, either whichever one works best, and try to hammer out what we're going to name these things. Okay, and actually, there's one more thing mm -hmm. uh, in this. Yep. I I implemented 
a core search called set variable. So it's now possible for you to, during detection, you can say, I want to set this variable to this value, and you can order it however you want it in, in the middle of the other searches. I see. So you can assign, you can assign it's not part something of as part during the searching path. So during the searching, it will you can call set somewhere in the middle of it or at the end. Right? Yeah, I don't think I actually put it in the width, though. In the, yeah, it's here. Is this not it? Well. And the I course. can't. Did I actually explain what it's doing there, or did I just? Maybe not. No, I think it's just a sentence. We're supposed to guess what it means. <laughs> well, whips are essentially specs, so yeah, guessing is appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Bob with the anti-advice. Um, right. So, yeah, that's interesting. The only challenge with set variables, I could see people trying to use it later in between packages or something, which of course doesn't work at all. Um, so on and so forth. All right, this generally sounds good to me and I still like the idea of being able to use it more generally and it sounds like we are in position to do so. We just have to choose to add more messages to the system, which was one of the big changes of early burn in Wix 4 was to move to that message system as opposed to the previous interface-based system that was constantly breaking change anytime we changed anything. Anything else, Sean, on this topic? Yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, can we go back to 6026? 6026. Which one is that? 26. Blue Sharper should provide. Yes, this is a 4 feature unless somebody screams for 3. Yeah. I, I want to go ahead and put in my scream. Oh, all right. Uh, having having looked at the the code and the fact that we got both a v3 and a v4 pull request, I want to go ahead and change my vote and say we should take it in 314. All right. I don't have a strong opinion, Sean. Yeah, let's take it. All right. Very good, Bob. Okay. I will. I'll do Make the, it so. the verge. All right. Carrying on, what are we talking about? Uh, so, uh, this happened a little while ago, and Sean just noticed it. Um, so, we're going to talk about it. Uh, GitHub has released a discussions feature uh, to some repos. We have not been invited to their beta, so I haven't actually used this much. I went and poked at it um, on GitHub, and I have questions about how it works. But let's start at the top. Um, today, our discussion place is generally, is, not generally, is officially the mailing lists. Um, and mailing lists are great because, well, they're well known. Everybody knows how mailing lists work um, and don't work. And one of the important features that I call out here specifically, and this is a selfish feature, but it's an important feature, um, is that mailing lists have a read state. In other words, you can, as an individual, know if you have seen this question or not. And that's important for me to keep track of how are things being answered on the mailing list or you know, or, or are they not getting answered? And generally, how are we doing there? Um, the downside with mailing lists is also pretty well known. They're not web friendly, although we could do, could have more work done around this area um, to make it more web friendly. Um, there is no such thing as an answer state. So um, like Stack Overflow, uh, there is the ability to you know, declare that a question is answered. Um, I don't know if this, I think this would be nice. Um, it has some strange um, implications. It can have some strange behaviors where people ask questions and never answer them. So you almost, you want to be able to answer them from the outside, as in, you know, a moderator is being able to say, yeah, yeah, this has been answered, let's move on, if you're going to track unanswered um, questions. So anyway, none of that's possible with mailing lists as they are. And then, of course, there's the whole problem with junk folders, spam email, being caught, all that kind of stuff, which makes mailing lists annoying to deal with, even though they are very well-known problems. 
I have looked a number of times at this course, um, at using it uh, to replace. I've looked at a lot of other web forums, and I generally agree with the discourse people that started discourse. They're all a terrible freaking mess. Discourse looks all right. It is obviously designed to be web friendly. It has read and answer state, although the read state, I've not had a lot of luck, so I needed, I, I'm not sure it's worked the way I expected to. Certainly being able to say I've unread this or I want to return to this seemed like a tricky thing. But the fundamental truth is with this course, there's a lot of unknown still in my mind about how well it would work for us and how well it works in general and how well it is or how um, challenging it is to moderate it and all that kind of stuff. And it just kept in state of my bucket of needs more investigation before we were to move and pick up the whole world to this course. Um, and in my inaction on that process, GitHub has come along and decided that uh, they want to compete with this course. I don't know. Um, they want to perpetuate the GitHub monoculture, as um, Bob has appropriately named it. Um, I put this as a pro that it's built into GitHub, although it, I waffled and almost put it as a con that it's uh, built into GitHub, which means everything is GitHub. And then yeah, it's I, a little bit of both. I went back and forth on this and decided that's something I want to talk about later, um, not right now. So anyway, the fact that it's built in GitHub means it has a lot of discoverability with it because people are generally expecting to find the world on GitHub. So it also looks to have read and answer states on it. So yay for that. Um, the negatives are, much like this course, it's not possible to host your own yet because it's still in the private beta, only some people are getting it. So uh, there's still a lot of questions about how well it runs, how well it works, um, what kind of questions you get, um, can you control it to only people that are logged in, so and so. Like, there's lots of things to go investigate, just like this course. Um, but I think, given what I've done with my investigation I've done with this course and what I see of GitHub discussions, I don't think it makes sense for Wix to move to discourse if discussion now that discussions are in play, because I think people would expect us, like they expect our issues to be on GitHub, they expect our discussions to be there. So if discussions end up working fine, and I have to admit, I roughly expect that they will end up working fine, um, certainly uh, not worse than the mailing list and have a lot better um, just alone being able to be found on the internet, which GitHub seems to be doing a pretty good job of making the content um, found on the internet. Um, the question turns into, where would we host the GitHub discussions? I don't think we want a GitHub discussions per um, repository, because there's many of them. And I also don't think we want one per version, Wix 3 versus the Wix 4, which means that we're kind of looking at putting it into one of our landing repositories, either the home repository or the issues repository, or some other repository like a discussions repository, which is kind of a weird thing to, but we did it for issues. So <laughs> creating a repository that has no code and is purely exists to have discussions. Um, so I, I've gone round and round on these kinds of things quite a few times. Nothing I've ever found has been better enough than mailing list to bother moving um, up to it with all of the uh, hassle that goes with that. So um, I think we're, I'm waiting for the beta to become available to us. And then I would seriously ask the uh, question of, hey, where would we put this? Um, and I was curious if anybody had, uh, right, right here, after listening to me ramble about all these different things I've gone up and down and around on, does anybody have a feeling of which one they would pick right now? Well, so my question before I can answer that is, do you envision this replacing Wix users as a discussion and support system? Yeah. And what about Wix devs? Is it also discussion? Yeah, uh, discussion worthy? Yeah, so I don't know um, if we can split them. I do see it getting rid of Wix users, um, which is why I tossed out issues. It's basically where you can discuss issues right. versus open issues. Um, and I don't have a perfect ex um, answer for where Wix devs would go. Having not played with it, I don't know. Discourse has a way of creating multiple 
um, I forgot yeah. what they call them, areas that you could have things. So it was pretty easy, Wix users, Wix devs. I don't know if Discussion's going to have something like that. Or if you tag things, I don't really, I don't know a lot of that yet. Um, sure. You're right. We could end up with needing two, I guess, if we want to have two separate places to discuss things. Okay. Well, the big question for me was if basically we're talking about shutting down the mailing list and saying go here right. to talk with your peers about your your Wix Stop. issue your support and and that's where I'd say issues we've been pretty clear we don't do support in issues so it might be a little weird to say we don't do support in issues we do discussions in issues however so go here um, I wouldn't mind if we had multiple repos for that a separate repository for yeah I mean it's there is supposedly a way of, there's supposedly a way of um I've seen rumors of of uh, some sort of flow between um, issues, pull requests, and discussions. Um, so depending on how that worked out, I yeah I could see it living in issues as in look we don't have discussions in an issue, right? You have discussions and discussions, not a discussion issues. And so um, I don't know what we would do anyway. Um, yes. Yeah, I thought I thought there's supposed to be the ability to convert an issue into a discussion. And right. the discussion yeah. into it. Yeah, that I, I'm, like I said, there's a lot of things I want to play with it to get a feel for. How does this work? How well does it work? What can you do with it? Um. So. No, I was I was reading the discussion of that announcement, and basically they were saying you just need to email them to ask them to join the beta, and then they'll probably just turn it on for you. Okay, can you find that? Because the I caught the blog post and I didn't. Missed that so, but Grant, I'm usually go through those really fast, so I might have seen that. If you, if you forward me that link, Sean, I will send that mail to them and get it. See if they'll turn us on, or at least put us in the queue to turn them on, um, and then we'll okay. play with it a little bit. Because um, I mean, the read state is the most important thing for me. It's the only way I can keep track of the world and how much churn is going on. Um, so, uh, if it has that, the answer state is kind of nice to have. Um, especially if we can set it from the outside, basically declaring, yeah, this person's never coming back and never setting an answer, so we're going to declare that this has been answered and move on. That has some value. Um, and if it works well with the rest of GitHub, then if you buy into the GitHub monoculture, then um, there we go. Um, but that's that. So, I, Sean, did you have a feel for which repository to put it in? I mean, they might, if we want the integration of converting in between an issue and discussion, and if they force you to be in the same repository for that to work, I think we would have to use issues. Should we rename issues? I, that's fraught with all kinds of peril, but because um, <laughs> they'll do the rename redirect for you for, you know, for things. I don't know if there's something we could rename it to then, but right. But what would we? Re Rename it to that would cover both concepts. I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was, I was just checking. I was just throwing it out as an option. Um, I mean, so, I think issues is fine. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Because it's it's not like I mean, some is it ASP.NET that has an announcements um, repository? I think. Where they put yeah, issues. Yeah, Core does as well. Dude, is it .dot net core too? Yeah, they have an announcements yeah. org, so you can listen on that, and there's never supposed to be any traffic. And every once in a while, someone will post an announcement, forget to lock it, and then people start discussing it. And they're like, "Don't do that." Then they lock the issue and kick everybody over to wherever they're supposed to be discussing it. So um, we haven't done anything like that, um, but that's again, that's the whole GitHub monoculture. If you buy into everything, then that's the thing. so. I guess there's some precedent for having very few. Uh, mailing lists, or very few, or many repositories, not very few repositories. Um, I also and taking think, advantage of tags and such. Yeah, I also think we're underutilizing home, so I think there's something we can do. We could do stuff there too, um, just kind of making it. Hey, here's a starting place. Here's a friendly place to start. Or home, but I don't know if that's. I don't know yet. Um, 
I could definitely see Wix devs being on home. And yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, and they have added the ability to move issues between repos. So I'm wondering if discussions is going to get the same treatment. So if someone did, you know, start, start a thread, uh, if that's the right term in home, we could say, Oh, let's just move that to issues discussion. Yep. 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 So, um, I will go send them an email and go find that place to send them. Sean, if you have it, just poke it at me and then I will send an email, see if they can get it turned on for us. And then, um, we will go from there. But uh, that's the state of the world until, you know, until we get comfortable and are ready, uh, we will uh, stay with the mailing lists and then we will find a good way of archiving the mailing lists um, should we move because I certainly don't want to lose all that information that's there. Um, so we will have that um, and do that. All right. So, yeah, something that may change in the not too. It won't be right away. Wix 4 is more important than moving all this stuff around right now. Um, and, and on that note, not talking about Wix 4 a lot today, um, but we've been making a lot of good progress, and I think in two weeks we will be talking about Wix 4 status again. I just kind of want to do issues today and roll through it. So, knowing that Wix 4 comes, the discussion is coming again in two weeks, is there anything else people want to ask or talk about, um, discuss? Jacob's here. I, we've kind of ignored all his questions, but I think we've answered them. Um, as we were discussing things. Um, I don't know if Sean was taking cues from Jacob's comments because it feels like Sean has always said what Jacob asked. Um, anything else going on? Stuff? Things? Okay, quiet out there. Uh, I think that says that we'll be back in two weeks, which is June 10th according to my schedule. Um, since we seem to be uh, holding solid on this time, we will, uh, I, this seems to be working for people. Uh, Jacob's here, Sean, Bob, and I are all making it. That's great. Um, and my kids aren't too noisy in the background. So that's uh, always a positive as well. So June 10th, uh, same time. And we'll be back. And I think we're probably going to talk more about Wix 4 than we did. I know we'll talk a lot more about Wix 4 than we did today because we hardly ever say anything about Wix 4 today. Um, but it is top of mind. So two weeks, mostly about Wix 4. We'll do triage, of course. Uh, until then, you guys take it easy. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.